Thank you so much for joining me for an exciting presentation of how to stay proactive in a socially reactive world. My name is Avital Eidenbaum. I'm a social media correspondent for Studio 5 Innovation, as well as the creator of the Social Media Fitness Gym. My other presentations with Schweike Media include Unlocking the Power of Organic Social Media and Inside Facebook Insights and Facebook Graph Search. I hope you have a chance to check them out. You can also follow me on Twitter at Avid Avital. Before we jump into the material, I want to thank Schweike Media for giving me another opportunity to speak to you guys today. I'm really excited to be presenting on today's topic, how to stay proactive in a socially reactive world, so let's get started. First, let me ask you a question. How did you hear about 9-11? Now, during 9-11, I was teaching English in South Korea, so it was already the end of the day for me because of the time change. I remember coming home from Taekwondo practice late that night and my husband alerting me of planes that crashed into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Then we watched the news together and we witnessed the horror of the towers falling and it was heart-wrenching. Chances are you had a similar experience hearing about 9-11 from a person. Whether it was a friend, a co-worker, or someone you knew, Chances are you heard about 9-11 from a real person. Now let me ask you another question. How did you hear about the Boston bombing? I remember seeing a tweet about it on my smartphone and soon enough every social channel was inundated with the horrible news of what was going on in Boston. And it's quite possible that's how you learned about the Boston bombing too. From your mobile phone or social media channel shortly after the bombing took place. Either way, it was likely your news came from technology and not a real person. And that's the kind of world we're living in now, real time. Our technology has evolved in such a way that people share and communicate such tragedies like the Boston bombing in real time. Businesses, however, should seek caution on social channels when reacting to a national crisis. As we learn from numerous mistakes made by businesses following the Boston bombing and other disasters that took place in 2013, your real-time responses may create an embarrassing PR disaster. So what do we do about it? So as a business, how do you proactively deal with a socially reactive world when such tragedies take place? Well, that's what we're going to cover and how you can stay proactive in a socially reactive world. Like I mentioned in the previous slide, the most important thing businesses need to realize is that we operate in real time, which means mistakes, however small, innocent, or unintentional, are seen by the world in real time and can create a viral wave of bad publicity that we don't want to get into. So how do we avoid using poor judgment on social media channels? Well, there are some great benefits to being able to discover, track, and share the information that matters to us and with people that matter to us. But in cases like the Boston bombing, there were some very important lessons, mostly learned from the social media mistakes made by businesses in response to the Boston bombing, that businesses should be aware of to prevent their brand from risking bad PR during such a tragedy. So what are some basic tips we can learn to stay proactive in a socially reactive world? The biggest recommendation is that once you're aware of an unfortunate event like the Boston bombing is to seize all automated posting on social media channels. Many businesses today use services like Hootsuite or IFTTT to automatically post content to their newsfeed. In cases of the Boston bombing or a tragedy taking place, it's recommended to stop this kind of auto posting. This is something that's really easy to do if you are using something like Hootsuite or a related service. And if you are a business, it's best to only post supportive posts. I have bulleted that unless you're a media agency, you shouldn't be posting like a reporter, and this is more my personal opinion. One of the lessons we learned from Boston was that some of the information being shared rapidly on social channels may have been misleading or not completely true. And quite honestly, the last thing you want to do is blast to your social channels information that later turns out to be false or misleading, which is why I feel that unless you're a media agency, 
businesses should be a supporter on social channels and not a reporter. The final tip I have for you is to avoid self-promotion. And while this may be obvious to many businesses, turned out to be a valuable lesson learned the hard way by some businesses during the Boston bombing. Let's take a look at one example. This is a screenshot of a tweet posted on the day of the Boston bombing. In honor of Boston and New England, may we suggest whole grain cranberry scones. It likely was not the business's intent to sound so insensitive and self-promoting, but you can understand why the public would be so outraged to see such a post during such a dark time. One post that I did see often was this post, which is a quote made by Mr. Rogers about looking for the helpers who show they care when disaster strikes. It's a very comforting quote which can also help show your support and respect in times of tragedy. Now, I saw this quote come up many different times in different forms and different ways by different businesses on various social channels. And it's quotes like this that I strongly recommend all businesses have in their arsenal to use in such cases. Now let's say your business is directly affected by a tragedy or a natural disaster. For this example, we can learn a great deal from iThemes. Now iThemes is a very popular website host to a suite of plugins like Backup Buddy and so on, and they're used frequently by web developers and just so happen to be based in Oklahoma. Following the Oklahoma tornadoes where towns, homes, and lives were destroyed, iThemes posted this on the header of their website and every page on their website. We're fine in Oklahoma. Here's how you can help our neighbors. This is an amazing example to me because iThemes is based in Oklahoma and were directly affected from the tornadoes. They even wrote on their website that a few staff members did lose quite a bit of their possessions from the tornado's destruction, but were grateful their families were safe. And being located in the center of destruction gave them an opportunity to help their community, which is why I think this is a great lesson all businesses can learn from, especially when disaster strikes so close to home. Another mistake that got quite a bit of spotlight last year were mistakes or bad choices made by employees of businesses. The picture at the top is a woman who decided to dress as a Boston bomber victim for Halloween. This picture caused such an uproar on social channels that one of the many consequences this poor woman faced, aside from being cyberbullied, was being fired from her job. Her bad choice in her costume created such negative publicity for her employer, she was eventually terminated. Another example is a man who accidentally posted something very personal to his business's Twitter account. Now this accident was unintentional, but still created negative publicity for his business. Another example of a business getting bad PR is from a disgruntled employee. In this case, a man posted negative tweets onto the business's Twitter feed after being fired from his employer. The negative tweets angered customers and became bad PR for the business. So how can we take these mistakes and turn them into proactive tips for your business? One recommendation is to seek a second opinion before posting anything. What may sound okay to you could be potentially offensive to someone else, which is why it's a good idea to seek a second opinion before posting anything. A second tip, which is a little obvious but still important, is to double check which account you're posting to before you're actually posting something, especially if it's something that's really personal. We've seen many mistakes recently of businesses retweeting and posting information that included links that weren't double checked and were actually links that were sent to inappropriate websites or contained inappropriate pictures. It's really easy to double check your links and what you're actually sending before you send it. So always double check which account you're posting and any links you're including in your posts. One way to help make sure that you're only posting business posts on your business account and personal posts on your personal account is learning a lesson from Disney. Now I went to school in LA and I had many friends who worked at Disneyland and one of the many strict rules I learned about being a Disneyland employee was that it was strict company policy that you could not wear your Disney costume outside of Disneyland. 
If you were caught doing so, you were immediately terminated. This had to do with keeping a very positive and clean image Disney's brand represents to the public. Let's say a Disneyland employee was caught doing something wrong, like getting a fight in a bar, for example. It would be bad PR for Disney if this employee was dressed in their Disneyland costume. So Disney implemented a very strict rule that your personal life is completely separate from your Disney life, and no employee should bring their work home. You should consider having similar rules for your business. Our technology makes it incredibly easy to integrate the two. Having two clear distinctions of when your employees can interact on social networks for your business or for their own personal use can help prevent accidental posts from showing up on the wrong account. Another recommendation is to immediately change passwords of social channels if an employee leaves the company. This should be standard practice, so make it a policy if you haven't already. Because disgruntled employees, as we've learned, can create some of the biggest negative PR nightmares for your business. Another problem that I see many businesses getting into is accessing their Facebook page. If you have someone create your page, you should have immediately been assigned manager of that page. If not, you're putting yourself at great risk. Here's why. A manager has access to all the features of your page, whether it's to unpublish your page, add or delete admin roles, and so on. Only a manager can make these changes. If you have a Facebook page for your business, you need to be manager of it. You also need to know who else is managing your page. If it's someone that's no longer working with you, they need to be removed from your Facebook page. Be proactive of monitoring and handling your Facebook page. Don't wait until there's an emergency to deal with it. Understand the admin roles of your Facebook page and make changes now if you need to. To get to your admin settings, hover over Edit Page at the top and select Manage Admin Roles. You'll only be able to see this feature if you're a manager, so make sure you're a manager of your page. I can't stress this enough. Going into your admin roles, you can see every person that admins your Facebook page, managers, content creators, and so on. The only difference between a manager and a content creator that you should be aware of is that a manager can assign other admin roles as well as delete them. A content creator cannot, but has all the other benefits a Facebook manager would have. So if you've just hired an intern to manage your Facebook page, assign them as a content creator, not necessarily a manager. They'll have all the power and access to your page they need and you'll still maintain full control of your Facebook page. As owner of your business, you need to be manager of your Facebook page and make sure that whoever else is managing your page still works with you. If they stop managing your page, their role and access to the page should be removed. Many times, businesses would hire someone to make their Facebook page, never be made manager, and then that person would disappear. Without having admin access to their Facebook page, businesses were left helpless when real changes needed to be made. Don't let this happen to you. Be proactive now to help make dealing with unforeseen events and challenges preventable or less of a headache to deal with when you are really dealing with the crisis. So to summarize what we've just gone over, be proactive before a crisis strikes by having a plan and policy in place now for how your business should handle such national tragedies or natural disasters, how to address inappropriate social media behavior by employees, whether accidental or intentional, preparing for worst case scenarios of a social media PR nightmare and allowing company decision makers appropriate access to social channels, such as being assigned a manager or a content creator of a Facebook page. Well, that concludes this presentation Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Avital Eidenbaum. I want to thank Schweike Media once again for giving me an opportunity to present. We look forward to seeing you guys again. Thank you so much.